All right, so here's what we got. Orange pill galore. Y'all know, y'all have seen enough of my stuff now that y'all know that I don't paint like this. This is what happens with the etching primer often is it creates a stupid amount of orange pill. Um, and if you don't take your time to block it out before you paint, then you're gonna be painting on top of orange pill, which is gonna make everything worse. See how bad that orange pill is? I mean, it is bad, 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 bad. This is bad. I don't ever paint like this. You can't even see the reflection, hardly. It's distorted. That's orange peel. That's because, you can see I got runs. That's because I just rock and rolled straight over top of etching primer without blocking it. So if you start out with orange peel, then everything you stack on top of orange peel is going to recreate more orange peel. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And if you're not have a panel laying flat, like if this panel would have been laying flat and I could have built it up thick with clear, the clear would have basically self-leveled and leveled out. And it would have looked a lot better than this. I mean, look at that. Okay. But being I had these things hung up, I hit all these in one shot. Okay. The back sides, the front sides, everything. So I hung these from the ceiling and hit everything in one shot you can see that orange peel it's bad so this is probably what it looked like if you don't know how to paint and you paint at your house you know and you're starting out this is probably what you're gonna have um so we're gonna wet sand and buff these a day i've grabbed everything from the shop it's a beautiful day so we're gonna work here at the house i hate being at a shop anyway my home garage is way more relaxing um so we grabbed all of our compounds our buff pads or wet sandpaper um, uh, old spray bottle urine gone this is going to be orange peel gone today we're going to put some soap and water in this um, i think that's actually what's already in it soap and water and uh, we're going to try to cut this orange peel out now the only thing that i'm gambling and this would be the same thing for you if you're new to painting is if you cut through your clear coat okay and you wet sand too much off you have to redo these all over, paint them all over again. At least one side's done. We won't be cutting and buffing none of the back sides. We'll only be cutting and buffing the front sides. But if I accidentally cut through, then whatever panel I cut through on has to be repainted. So we're just gonna kind of see what happens today and see if we can fix these. Uh, the orange peel, I knew I was gonna have to wet sand either way. So if I would have did um, etching primer and then had to come back and uh wet sand you know the next day and then paint either way you're still wet sanding coming back so what i'm hoping is i'm gonna wet sand and buff and there's just no gonna be going to back so even if i do wet sand this and still have to go back i'm not technically behind a step the only thing i'm doing is trying to cheat a step and get ahead by putting a buff on it instead of painting so we'll see what plays out i mean if and also you're wasting material if you wet sand these and then you still have to go back and paint, then you're wasting material. You're wasting clear coat, you know, um, that's about it versus primer. So if you either, if you would have done etching primer and then a high build primer and then base coat clear coat, you know, you would have wet sanded your etching primer high build, you'd have wet sanded your high build and then come back and painted your base coat clear coat. Whereas what I did was etching primer, base coat clear coat. So I've only done three steps. And I'm hoping this final step of clear coat that I can just buff it slick and I would have actually saved money on not having to put high build primer on it. So I hope I have enough clear on here to be able to cut it out. But let's get started and we'll see what happens. So what we're going to start what we're going to start out with, since we have uh, such so much orange peel to cut out, and I'm not trying to spend all day on it, is we're going to start out with a thousand. Uh, this is just some DA paper that I had from the hard or from the paint store that was on clearance that I bought. I don't know if you can get a hold of a thousand where you're at, but if you can't, then just start as low as you can, as long as it's above a thousand. I wouldn't recommend going down to six, eight hundred. I know some people will say that they'll cut this right out really quick with six or eight hundred. You can, but the problem with it is whatever number you go low you've got to step back up. So the lower you go, the more steps you're going to have to step back up. So I would love to start with 1200, but I want to get to it. So my plan is a thousand and then jump to 2000, hopefully run over it with 3000 and then hopefully put three, a three step buff process over it and be done. So I'm going to just start knocking this out. I'm going to go for my runs first. I got just two little runs right here 
and I'm going to go for these little things, get these knocked down, and then I'm going to just start doing the whole plant panel, do half of it, flip it around, do the other half, and then uh, see what we got. Okay, so as we're approaching the end of this, let me see if I can show help y'all out if you've never wet sanded before, okay? When you're actually wet sanding, can you see that orange looking stuff through there? The orange texture, or orange peel? Okay, you can see it through your water. Whereas if you look over here, okay, you can see how it's going away. So you see these uh, shinier dots? What is on my fingers? Paint, paint, that's exactly what it is, as always. Um, these are lows, okay? So that's orange peel you can see through there and if you go up here where i've already cut let's see if i move the seven water out of the way it's really hard to show you okay you can't see on that but as we're sanding if you watch and also if you, you hear that squeaking right there okay that squeaking is a piece of trash on your pad okay and if it's something you care about then it's a piece of dirt or debris and that debris or dirt is going to put gouges and scratches all in your work. Um, and they'll be really hard to get out. So basically, if this is a thousand grit, without getting scientific on y'all, then this is cutting at a thousand grit level. But if you have one little piece of trash in here, that one little tiny speck of dirt or whatever could be cutting at like a 320 or a 600 level. And so you'll have everything buffed and then you'll have these little lines, just random lines like this maybe left behind what that is, is that's where that piece of dirt went like that and it cut more aggressive than everything else so everything else in here buffed off okay and buffed out the glass but it left behind these lines from where that dirt was so if you hear that squeaking and it's on a job you care about then you need to quit and try to clean it out flush it with a water hose you know rinse it off that's why sometimes i spray my actual pad and flush it down but I was going to try to show y'all how you can see it going away. But I think it's going to be hard to capture on camera, especially on this. But there was a couple tips for you. And I'm just running over it about at this speed. I know we do a lot of time lapse. So I'll show you for a second kind of how I'm actually wet sanding. Because I know somebody asked me the other day on Randy's hood, how long did it take me to wet sand that hood? And I said to do that hood, to cut and buff it. It probably took about 45 minutes or it should take you probably about 45 minutes but i actually probably spent an hour on it so this one piece right here i'll probably have at least 30 minutes in by the time i'm done if not if not more so all of this white stuff is clear coat okay so this white stuff that's cutting off is clear coat if this goes black all of a sudden or if you were cutting red like on randy's car and all of a sudden you start having red that means you're cutting into color and you're screwed unless you're wet sand a single stage which is a whole nother monster so we haven't wet sanded none of this edge and you can see our orange peel in your reflection. So when you're doing this, you kind of have to look through, through your color. You have to look through the soap and you have to really stare at it and see the change. You're looking for that orange peel and that's how you're going to know when you got it all. I mean, of course, we're going to uh, rinse this off here in a second and dry it off and look at what we got before we move on to 1200. Um, but you want to kind of get it in one hit and not have to keep wasting time checking your work you know now we don't care about getting it all on this thousand step because when i put 1200 on it it's going to cut more so you don't want to cut so much material off on a thousand that then you have nothing to left nothing left to cut with you know your 1200 or your 2000 or whatever i think i just said 1200 we're going a thousand to two thousand and you just want to keep some soap and water on it and you can actually see okay so you can see some of the orange peel right there this line right here is where the zip tie was hanging so this is where not quite as much clear is built up as everywhere else so we want to cut that flat harper why are we crying this morning it's because dad's filming ain't it 
I'm about to put a piece of sandpaper in your hand. So I'm gonna keep getting at this. We're gonna rinse this off and then I'm gonna show y'all here in a second what we got. Okay, so as this continues to dry out, we'll be able to see, okay? That's what it looks like when you've missed orange peel. So you can see the orange peel that hasn't been got and then that's what it looks like when you've got it all. Um, I don't see any of them gouges that I was talking about, real hardcore scratches. Uh, there's a little piece of trash that's not quite gone, which that's exactly what we want to see, okay? On this thousand cut. There's two more pieces of trash that are not always gone, but that's exactly, again, exactly what we want to see. A little bit of orange peel left, that's what you want to see, okay? Um, that means that we have not cut extremely deep with our thousand. We almost have it all out already, which is good, but that means we still... You know, now when we go over it with our 2000, that's going to get probably 90% of the rest of this. Um, but I'm feeling really good about it. That wasn't too terrible much. You know, I should have timed myself for the people that was in, but it wasn't too terribly long to get the orange peel out with a thousand. Anyway, we're going to load up with 2000 now and we're going to re wet sand this whole entire panel with 2000 and then we'll hit it with 3000 and then I'll show you what we got. All right, so here's our 2000 we're using. So your 2000 grit's right here. That's what it says. And then, you know, it just looks like uh, this. It's just a sheet of paper that you roll up around your block. I've went over it on other videos. I went over it again on the Randy one with the doors, um, the doors and the hood on how to fold this paper and how to use this. Um, the 3000 and I'm about to run over it with, I just got done with 2000. I'm not gonna clean it off. Um, I'm going to roll right over it with 3000. This is a 3000 Trizac made by 3M. So if you type in on Amazon or Google or uh, eBay, 3M Trizac 3000 grit, then you might be able to get these. I got these on clearance at the uh, paint store, and I'm just going to knock it on with 3000. If you do it with 3000, it just makes your buffing a little easier for the most part. So while I already have it wet, we're just going to stick this on this block. And these are designed to go on a special block that I don't, um, I don't have or use, and I'm not gonna buy because I bought these on clearance. So I'm just gonna hold this in my hand, basically like that maybe. Um, I might also just take my 3000 and wrap it around like that probably. Take this 2000 off of here and run over it with that, dry it out, um, and then we'll move into uh, buffing. So wrap it in your block like that. So make sure this block's clean and doesn't have dirt all in it because if it does, you might just be dropping dirt in that and then you're gonna scratch your panel up even more, especially now that you're already all the way down to 3000 grit. So 3000, let's get to buffing. All right, so that is our wool pad, okay. But just any wool pad, just try to get a decent one. Don't get something really, really cheap. Trust me. Um, and we did cut compound on that. So that's the cut compound we used. Okay. So now we're gonna switch to, especially being this is black, and these bags are all mixed up or I'd show you the bag. Well, let's see here if I can see on the bag. Okay, there you go. The wool compound or the wool pad right there. Okay, so there's the wool pad. If you need the part number, the name, or anything like that to search eBay or Amazon, there is the wool pad that I'm using. Okay, the foam pad. This is the white foam pad. Um, let me see if... I literally just have all these bags mixed up. Yeah, okay. So this is going to be the white pad. I'm pretty sure and just double check when you look it up i'm gonna show you each one so this is going to be a 3m perfected pad uh 05737 if you want to look this up on ebay or amazon this is going to be your second step especially when you're using a black job man the birds i don't know if y'all can hear that the birds are freaking loud outside this morning um this is going to be uh definitely a three step on a black job that's what i was told is i only need to do three steps on a black job and if you watched randy randy's videos where i've been cutting and buffing as you can see uh for me three steps has been working on everything so i haven't been able to get away with just two we're going to switch to the white pad and we're also going to hit it with cut compound okay and then i'll go over the third step with y'all
Okay, our final step that we're gonna move on to is gonna be the 3M foam polishing pad. Okay, the keyword polishing there, that means you need to change and get off of your compound and get on some polish. Um, but here's the 3M polishing pad, 3M uh, 05738. Uh, it's a perfect foam polishing pad. So it's gonna be your black pad and make sure, make sure if you're buying some other polishing pad, it needs to have this waffle print. So you'll go to Harbor Freight and a lot of cheap ones will just be flat on all these pads and they won't have this waffle pattern. When they're flat, the wax just kind of builds up and doesn't have nowhere to go. Whereas when they're dimpled like this, the wax can kind of have somewhere to go and have somewhere, you know, the pad has somewhere to cut on. So just try not to get the flat one. Make sure you get any one that looks dimpled like this. But let's throw this on the buffer and then we're gonna polish this all out. so there's our piece after we buffed it out um i think we saved that i think that's uh you know a pretty good uh answer that we saved that one look at that reflection ain't that crazy so even if you can't paint at your house or even if you can't you don't know how to paint like you can attempt it and then you can wet sand and buff it out so i want to show you all one thing i just want to go over to make sure you understand the reflection first there it is you remember how bad it was? Let's show you uh, comparison. Let's take the wing that we had, or the spill plate, I'm sorry. It's like this clean. Okay, now let's show you what we started with versus what we got. Just so you remember. There you go. There's the, there's the spill plate, that's what we started with. Okay, here's what we got. The camera had to focus. There's what we got. Here's what we started with. Here's what we got. So y'all can do this, man. Don't sit there and sell yourself short and think that you can't paint your parts because even if you paint like that, even if you put runs in it, you know? I've got runs in, where's the, I think it's the other one that's in the truck that's got runs in it. But you remember I had little runs in that one. I took them all out. So you can do this. You can do this at your house. You can do this in your garage. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, check this out. I'm going to show you another mistake. Um, cut through. Remember I told you cut through? There's a cut through. Looks like the start of a cut through. This is where I was stupid and I was wet sanding on top of this edge. You should never wet sand on top of a wet edge. But sometimes when you start wet sanding, um and you get more brave you know when you first start you'll be smart and you'll stay a half an inch an inch away from the edges that way you don't cut through or burn the edges but then as you get braver you're just like screw it go over it because you get away with it nine times so then on the tenth time you get a cut through um customer job this has to be repainted there's no f real fixing this i mean you could i guess uh, mix up some black and clear and go over top of this area and then try to wet sand it all out you know smooth the next day and everything but more than likely uh customer paying job uh this whole panel has to be scuffed and repainted there's no way around it uh my job this is a workbench i meant uh spoiler i'm sorry we all know what happens to the wings off the back of the car they're workbenches so you put a good reflection in them so you don't lose your washers and your nuts that way you can see them easy off the reflection we all know that this is a workbench even though it's pretty um you know somebody else's car it might not be a workbench but me it's going to get stuff thrown all over it, even if it's a parachute, you know, at the end of the track and you throw the chutes and then you chunk it up on top of the, you know, trunk of the car or something to go back or in the car, whatever. You know that this is going to get stuff set on top of it. Uh, you're going to be eating the cheeseburgers and hot dogs on it at the track. You know, you're going to be sitting sodas on it. And we're not repainting this panel. This panel's mine. So here's what we're going to try. Mm-hmm. Y'all know where I'm going with this, right? All we want to do, all I want to do, is I just want to get rid of some of the gray, which is the primer. I don't care what it looks like. There you go. So now you can still see, and it's probably going to wipe off whenever, you know, wax and stuff like that on it. But 
it's not that bad i'm gonna let it dry you know and then as we keep spraying wax on it and detail wax and everything maybe it'll stay maybe it wipes right off who knows but i ain't repainting this freaking thing because of that little cut through and you're gonna have a spoiler here on the side that might cast a shadow over it and you not see it anyway because that is um the thing but there's a warning um you know learn from my mistakes like i tell you all the time you know I tell people don't get near your edges don't stand on top of body lines this is technically a body line because i've been it you know technically you should be staying half an inch away from all your edges if you don't know what you're doing and you should be staying half an inch away from all your body lines um, a good way to do that if you're new is to take a uh, painter's tape half inch painter's tape and before you start literally stick it all the way around your edges stick it across the body lines so that you can't wet sand it you can't buff it because there's tape in the way and then that last little bit that's there is not gonna matter and if you want anything you know cut all this with 1000 have your painter's tape down and then you know when you do your 2000 or 3000 pull it up and just hit it lightly that way it's not you know you don't have to buff it so hard basically you have a higher grit on the body lines and the edges and it's easier and you know you just have a tiny bit of orange peel around the edge that nobody will ever see you'll never really notice it but that's that for that one so i'm gonna i'm not gonna show you every single panel because i just wanted to show you the steps but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and do all the panels and then um you know we'll see what everything looks like when it's done but i mean everything's going to pretty much look like this but if i make any more mistakes or have any more issues or any more things i can teach y'all i will definitely let you know okay so i got this one wet sanded out um i didn't bore y'all with it just want to point out a couple things you got to be careful on pieces like this okay i don't know if you can see in the reflection but we got some high spots because i bent this you remember in the video i bent this by hand you know my hands and knees so the metal has kind of bent with uh high spots where it's not rolled perfect because it's not pressed in a machine you know it has a curve to it but it's hard to see but you can kind of see like right here there's like a peak of a bend okay you got to be careful because just like on that wing if you ride too much on top of that um you'll cut through okay so if you're not perfectly flat be careful because that's technically a fine body line a small body line um what i've done is i did this with a thousand and i didn't quite do it as aggressive with a thousand then i spent a little bit more time on two thousand because it's a little softer um, and then i spent a way more amount of time on three thousand three thousand you're supposed to be able to buff out by hand technically by just doing a little elbow grease um so i really spent a lot of time with three thousand on here and you know along here so that hopefully i don't have to use the buffer as much on it um you can see along the edge right there that we still have some build up you know i've went over that in the other video clear coat build up it's going to build up along your edge these panels were hanging like this so everything ran down there to the bottom so i do have a little build up right here on the edge but i'm not worried about this i'm not i'm not trying to make this perfect you know this is exactly how a piece will probably look if you paint it at your house so I'm doing this just like y'all would do, um, and I'm just trying to help everybody. Um, we're not going to get obsessive over trying to cut that little nipple off, because I know if I try to cut that thing off with wet sandpaper or anything, I'm going to cut through and then ruin this whole panel. So it's just going to stay. It's not a big deal. If you see it at a track, uh, you see me at a track with a car eventually, check it out, see if the nipple's still there. Um, we're going to hit this with a buffer. I'm going to time-lapse buffing this one piece, because this piece gets really tricky. So your buff pad... You know is big okay see how big it is so you can't just sit there and sit this on the um the tailgate and just start buffing on it because it's going to sling it everywhere so you got to kind of buff one handed and hold the other one um you know you can't really put a clamp around this because then you might scratch it all up and then you'll try to hold this by hand and buff one handed and basically when you're buffing one handed you just don't want to put a lot of pressure on it you just want to let it float and just take your time um always also the buffer turns okay like this or if it's turning like this i'm not 100 sure but whatever whichever way it's turning you want to be spinning off the panel okay like this you don't want to be spinning into the panel because what that can do is the panel can go into the pad and you know rip it out your hand it hit the ground destroy the pad bust the edge of your panel so you don't and this side spinning clockwise so if you're spinning like this you want a little bit of an angle 
and spin off the edge. You don't want to be holding it flat because yeah, this side's coming off, but then this side is going into the panel, especially when we have a curve like this. You know, um, it's going to be really easy. So the best bet is just to be careful or don't go off the panel. Come on the edge like this and spin down the edge basically like this, okay? Spin down it like that, okay? But I'm going to do all sorts of weird, funky angles, and you just got to be thinking the whole time, making sure you're never running into an edge or, you know, that you're not spinning like this. And this side right here, yeah, you're running off the panel over here, but then this side is going into the panel. So you got to make sure you got some tilt on it. And normally you should be holding your buffer perfectly flat and you shouldn't have any tilt on it um, at all. But when you're doing a delicate small panel like this, there's no way around it. You know, sometimes you'll get yourself in situations where you have to literally buff like this on the side. So sometimes there's no way around it. That's the reason why it's wrapped all the way to the edge is in case you need it, it's there, but you should always try to hold it flat. So let's get this piece buffed out. Okay, and as you've seen, you know, don't um, don't get uh, scared to be, get creative. Like, you're going to have to get creative. If you have a neighbor across the street that will walk over and, you know, help you know, uh, hold it, or you got a buddy that can come over for the day and help you hold the panel that don't mind getting wax slung all over them, um, get a second hand because this thing is heavy, man. So it is really hard to sit here and just hold all this weight that's out here, you know, up. And that's the reason why I take my leg like this and let the weight of the buffer ride on your leg. And you kind of have to stand on one leg, sit it on the panel, and then, you know, just kind of do like that and work it because it's, uh, it's hard, man. Doing these little panels like this by yourself um, is extremely hard. And you'll start to fill it in this muscle right here because you're trying to keep the weight off the panel so that you don't have so much weight riding on it. And this buffer does have a trigger lock and yours might be too. So basically you push the button down and then you push this side button in. Okay, and then that locks the trigger on. So what I just did on the polishing step was that one is I actually held the buffer like this and did it, okay? This thing is still heavy, it's really heavy. If you've never held a buffer, most of them are heavy. Not all of them, I guess there's probably some that are more lightweight than others. Um, this is just one uh, uh, in-store brand one from my paint supplier. Okay, there's the part number. It is a variable speed buffer. So you do want the variable speed right there. The switch on here will scroll, okay, to make it faster and slower. I did all this on level one. I did the wing on probably two, maybe creeping into three sometimes too. Randy's hood, I definitely did it on three, if not creeping into three and a half. Um, you definitely want a variable speed buffer, but um, even if you hold it up there, you know, by the main body, you're still gonna feel it in the top of your arm. So, but there's our piece. But that thing turned out amazing being how bad we were, you know, being we were like that, and now we're like this. So I'm happy. So we got one more side piece to do. I'm not gonna, I'll show you how to get the run out. I'm gonna demonstrate on this one how to get the run out. And then we have to do one side of the wicker bill, only the side that's exposed. And then that's it. We'll finally get to start uh, assembling the wing. Um, I think these videos are going to be two parts though, wing assembly uh, or the wing video and then helping people wet sand and buff. So I think there'll be two videos out of this, but yeah, we're going to get the run out of this one. I'll show you how to do or go over that for, you know, a minute or two. And then I'm just going to buff everything else and that's going to be the end of it. Okay. So we have a run here. So to get this run out, what we're going to do is we've took a mixing stick, a paint mixing stick. I went over this in uh, another video. Also, I think the Randy buffing video. So if you haven't watched that, paper's blowing around. Now see, I got to clean that. If it hits the ground, it's got dirt on it. You've got to flush this off. So 
if you uh, watched uh, me buffing Randy's car video, then we went over the taking a mixing stick, cutting a mixing stick, and stacking up a wrapping tape around it. So there is about, I think, two mixing sticks here, maybe three, stacked on top of each other. And all I did was cut them to the length I wanted, which about this, wrap them with tape. This is going to create a hard block. When you're taking a run out, it's very important to make sure you have a hard block and you're not using a flexible one. If you have a flexible one, then you're just going to ride over top of the mountain. You know, if you think of a run as like a mountain, you're just going to ride over top of it and roll it versus cutting it. Um, there's other ways to take a run out, including razor blade and including uh, dolphin uh, dolphin putty, putting putty over it, basically sanding it all down together. But me, I just use a hard block and ride on top of it and try to take it down. So I'm going to take my thousand. I cut uh, my thousand into a square and I'm just going to roll my thousand up around my block like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my wet sandpaper and I'm just gonna ride on top of the run. So I'll put it on a um, you know, time lapse for you, but I'm just gonna ride on top of the run and we're just gonna focus on getting the run out. Once the run's out, then we're gonna switch back to a flexible block and take the orange peel out the rest of the panel. Okay, so that's about all I'm gonna take out of that. Normally you would get all of that gone where you can't see the edges of them runs, but I'm extremely scared of cutting through on this panel, being that this panel like we just went over has some grooves in it, you know, high spots. So I'm extremely scared of cutting through this thing uh, with a hard block. So now we're just gonna switch to the foam block on this one and just try to roll everything else out, which normally like on a car panel or something, you want to do that. But that's what we're gonna do in this situation just because I'm afraid of cutting through it and I really want to put this thing together and not have to repaint this panel. So we're gonna just hopefully roll the rest of it out and hopefully you won't see it in the reflection. But there's no promises that this, this might cut through. And I apologize about the wind that all of a sudden started whipping up out in the middle of no freaking where. Basically, there's trash in it. You can hear it squeaking. We're basically going to ignore that run now. So we're not going to think about the run. And we're just going to cut the panel like we would. Because if you start obsessing over that run, then you're going to get a cut through fast. Because you're going to be obsessing about cutting it down. So just focus on the rest of your orange peel, just like you did on your other pieces. Ignore the rest of that run. Move on to your 2000 and your 3000 and hopefully by time hopefully you don't cut through and then hopefully by the time you're done with everything um hopefully you don't see it and it's gone if not then after you buff it if you still do see it you can go back and hit that area a little bit more so there's our part all put together wet sanded buffed we you know got everything buffed uh, still got some wax on it, but that's uh, that's the part that we built and we were wet sanding and buffing. So make sure, hopefully, this video helps you out on your wet sand and buff project or when you're learning to paint how to straighten your stuff out and get your stuff where it looks like uh, glass. Even if it starts out terrible with orange peel, you can always get it where it looks amazing. There's the reflection. Pretty crazy. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Thanks, y'all.